Praise the Lord. Good morning, delivery Christians. It's another beautiful week again. The Lord has granted us yet another opportunity to be counted amongst the living. May his name forever be praised. We are commanding our week again, and I hope that you've got your faith packed up and ready to receive yet another word from the Lord. Our word for this week says, This week we decree that we are instruments of unity in our homes, workplaces, spiritual community, and all places we enter into. We foster atmospheres that command the blessings of God and eternal life in Jesus' name. How encouraging, how liberating this word is. This week, we decree that we are instruments of unity. I want you to say to yourself, I am an instrument of unity in my home, at my workplace, in my business, in my church, everywhere I go into. I am an instrument of unity. I foster atmospheres that command the blessings of God and eternal life in Jesus' name. Amen. The word for this week was taken from the book of Psalms 133. Psalms 133. It reads, How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. It is like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the bed, running down on Aaron's bed, down on the collar of his robe. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion. For there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. The psalmist particularly talks about unity, about the benefits, the advantages of unity. And he says in verse 1 how good and how pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. And then he likens unity to precious oil that is poured on the head. You know, when oil is poured on a person's head, you know, it flows down seamlessly without restrictions. You know, it goes straight down. And then he says in verse 2, it is running down on the bed. So it moves from the head and flows without restriction to the face, to the bed. And then running down on Aaron's bed, you know, Aaron was the first priest okay in israel it says it runs down on aaron's bed down on the collar of his robe how beautiful you know we are the priests of this day the bible says that we are a royal priesthood you know a holy nation a peculiar people you know we are called to show for the praises of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous life so we are the aaron's of today and the psalmist is saying to us, look, it is pleasant if you, God's people, live together in unity. This unity will be like oil. will be like, you know, the oil signifies anointing. It will be like the anointing is poured upon you. And the anointing will flow seamlessly into every area of your life. How beautiful. You know, what comes to mind is how much we have cost ourselves by living in strife. How much we have cost our families by living in disunity. Unity speaks of oneness. Unity speaks of harmony. And the Lord mirrors this oneness to us by the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. You would never see one saying something different from the other. They act in unity. Their operation is unified. The word will always align with the Lord. Everything, you know, is one. And that is the same thing that the Lord wants us to mirror here on earth. Regardless of our differences, regardless of our statuses, regardless of how we feel. If you take a look at the thumbnail we have there, you know, with the stones laid upon each other, you would see that the stones have different sizes and shapes. But they would never be able to line up on each other without each one assuming a position or a posture that might or might not be comfortable. But for them to line up and be able to stay still and attain balance, 
each one must be willing to bend, must be willing to move from what they define as comfort, from what they want to attain balance. That exactly is how peace also comes to be. That exactly is how unity comes to be. Some of the ingredients that give room for peace and for unity is peace, it's love, it's humility. You know, the state of wanting to serve and honor others more than ourselves. This is something that is lacking in our world today. It is lacking in, we don't, it's lacking in homes. It's lacking even in the church of God. It's lacking in businesses. And that is why we want to climb on top of other people to get to the top. You know, when the disciples asked the Lord Jesus, he says, who, which one of us is going to, is, is, is the greatest? And the Lord told them that the one that wants to be great has to be the servant of all. You know, for us to foster unity in our homes, in our businesses, and wherever we find ourselves, we must be willing to be humble just as the Lord Jesus was humble. He was in every sense equal with God, but the Bible says he counted it not robbery to be equal with God, and he chose to humble himself. There is a role that unity plays, as we can see here in Psalm 133. He says, it is like precious oil. So that means when we are operating in disunity, we restrict the flow of the anointing. We restrict the flow of the anointing in our homes. We restrict the flow of the anointing in our lives. We restrict the flow of the anointing over our businesses. Oh wow, do you see how much we have been costing ourselves? No wonder we keep asking, where is the power of God as of old? The power exists, but the atmosphere has changed. We have exchanged peace for disunity. We have exchanged love for strife. And that is why we cannot experience the move of God as it was in the times of old. The psalmist says in Psalm 133 verse 2, it says, It is like precious oil poured on the head. Deliberate Christians, unity is precious. It is something we need to guard jealously because that is the atmosphere the Lord can work in. That is the atmosphere the Lord can work with. Now let's go to verse 3. It says, It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion. Oh wow. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion. You know, when the day breaks, one of the things that ushers us into it is the falling of dew. And then I did a quick research to just know what this dew of Hermon is. You know, and I found out that the dew of Hermon, okay, is is a dew that falls, particularly um, in the eastern part of the world. You know, um, in Palestine, okay, it says that it's a soft mist that comes from the Mediterranean during the summer, when the heat is greatest, and the country is burnt up with a terrible sunshine. They say it is attracted by the inland height and it's condensed in copious moisture upon their sides and creeps down upon the plains reviving and refreshing every green thing so this dew comes first of all to mount hermon and it helps to keep up its unchanging robe of snow and to fill its springs and feed its cedars and then it flows down and makes the corn to go green in the valleys and the vines to swell out their purple grapes in the vineyards and the lilies to unfold their crimson radiance in the fields and it is to this wonderful phenomenon you know that the psalmist compares unity that the psalmist compares harmony so why are we complaining that our lives are not green that we are not flourishing when we have filled our lives and our spaces with strife and disunity one lovely thing about dew is that when it falls, it brings refreshment. It revives. And you know, when this dew falls on Mount Hermon, it flows down and the valleys benefit from it. You know, the valleys benefit from it. So there's something happening here. There is a feed off. What I mean by this is, as the dew 
is coming from heaven and falling on Mount Hermon. It flows from Mount Hermon to the valleys, to the hills. They benefit from it. And then it cools those areas, you know, and gives them refreshment in the time of scorching heat. Instead of the plants to dry out and wither, it also revives them and causes them to get green. It gives room for the fruits or for the plant to grow. How beautiful. So now imagine when evaporation also takes place, this dew that Hermon has released, okay, to refresh these places is also now taken up again into the heavens, into the clouds, and then it comes down back again on Mount Hermon and the cycle continues. What am I saying? I am saying to us that unity is a force that flows into other areas of our lives, giving room for the percolation of the power and the move of God when we give it room. But the main thing is us giving it room. Because if Hermon does not receive, then the hills, then the valleys remain dry and the corn will not grow. But the receipt, so that means it starts with you. It starts with me. It starts with us. It starts with every one of us taking that position, making that choice, you know, just as I explained with um, the stones, making that choice to live in unity. It is a choice. It's not going to happen naturally. Unity does not happen naturally. Unity is deliberate. So when there is room for strife, we say, no, I will not choose strife. I will choose peace. When we are angered and would rather lash out, we would allow the peace of God. We become slow to speak and quick to listen. We will hold back. We will choose to speak words that are seasoned with grace instead of releasing death with our mouth. These are the things that foster unity. We must remember at all times that it is more than just us. A lot of us do not understand that the things happening in our homes are the ones holding our businesses back. That the strives happening in our churches are the ones affecting our lives. And the things happening in the different churches are affecting the body of Christ. And as they are affecting the body of Christ, they are affecting our society, our countries, the nations of the world. Somebody might say, oh, what will my contribution do? Your contribution will go a long way. Because as Hermon receives, Hermon releases. And then it flows. So be the one that starts the flow. Be the one that starts the flow. And let this blessing move. Let this blessing extend into other spaces. You know, the beards are not the ones that receive the oil. Aaron's head was the one that received the oil, but it flowed down from his head down to his beard and it went as far as his skirts. Verse 3 of Psalm 133 says, It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion, for there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. So the Lord is saying, No unity, no blessing. No unity, no eternal life. What is eternal life? Eternal life is Jesus. Eternal life is Jesus. Deliberate Christian. Are you calling yourself Christian and wondering why so many unpleasant things are happening in your home? You have kicked out the prince of peace. You have kicked out the prince of peace with strife, with quarrels, with wrath, with impatience, with pride. It's time for us to go back to becoming instruments of peace. I remember the song by Don Moen. It says, um, Lord, make us instruments of your peace. It says, where there is strife, it says, let your peace reign. Are you going to make a decision today, deliberate Christians, to be an instrument of peace? One that starts the flow so that it can have an unrestricted movement into the other aspects of your life and the life of others. 
I can say from here that unity is contagious. You start it. The Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians chapter 2, it says we should, you know, foster the spirit of unity by the bond of peace. Deliberate Christians, it is time for each of us to do this. You want miracles, you want blessings. We pray, pray, pray. But the anointing is not moving in our midst because there is this unity. This week, our deliberate Christian challenge is to be an instrument of unity. Deliberate Christians, it is time for each of us to do this. You want miracles, you want blessings. We pray, pray, pray. But the anointing is not moving in our midst because there is this unity. This week, our deliberate Christian challenge is to be an instrument of peace. Be the first one to say sorry. Be the one who chooses to pull out of a heated argument. Be the one to forgive. Be an instrument of peace so that the blessings of the Lord can flow and so that eternal life can reside with us forever. I am so encouraged by this word and I do trust that you are as well. Please hold on to this word and I trust that you will be blessed by it in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Lord, we just thank you for this word that you have given us. We ask, oh God, for grace, Lord, to work in harmony. We ask, oh God, that our lives will be atmospheres that give room for the flow of the anointing, that give room for your blessings to be released, and that give room for eternal life. May we be the first point from which unity would flow into our homes, into our workplaces, into our churches, into our society, into our community, into our nations. Make us instruments of your peace, O oh God. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for listening. My name is Duminino. I would like to invite you to join us in Deliberate Christian Life. We are a Christian Discipleship and Lifestyle Transformation Ministry. We nurture Christians to get started on a progressive journey of appropriating grace to becoming Christ-like. We do life together. We study. We pray. And we hold ourselves accountable on the journey. It's going to be a beautiful engagement. It's going to be a beautiful time for you, a beautiful experience for you if you do join us. If you'd like to know more, please send an email to us, deliberatechristianlive at gmail.com. Have you subscribed? Please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you get notified every time we post a new video. It's such a blessing to do life with you. Be blessed this week as you consciously walk as an instrument of peace in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you for listening. We trust you have been blessed. If you would like to support the ministry financially, please pay to flutterwave.com forward slash pay forward slash DCL. I'll take that again. Flutterwave.com Dot com forward slash pay forward slash DCL. Please join us on Facebook. Our page is Deliberate Christian Life. On Instagram, the page is Deliberate Christian. And on Twitter, the handle is We Are Deliberate. Remain deliberate and be blessed in Jesus.